took a break, you searched your soul, and now the world's your lover. everyone. My name is Sean McPherson. I'm a host at The Current, and I'm very excited to welcome you to Line Check. This is a series of virtual conversations with Minnesota's music community, and I want to give a really big thanks to Mary Bew for kicking off tonight's event. Stay tuned because you're going to catch another song from her later this evening. Now, Line Check is a new series for The Current, and we really hope it's just the beginning. Experts from around the state gather to discuss topics, including the music economy, supporting safe spaces, and activism through music. Now, each of these topics deserves an extended discussion, more than the panel will be able to cover in one hour. But it's a start, and we want to keep these important conversations going into the future to make sure our music scene comes back even stronger than before. Now, I'm excited to introduce tonight's panel on mental health and self-care for creatives. The conversation will be led by Sarah Souter Johnson, a therapist and the co-founder of Dissonance, a nonprofit organization focused on the intersections of wellness and creativity. Sarah is joined by three Minnesota musicians. Annie Mack is a powerhouse blues singer, raised in North Minneapolis and currently residing in Rochester, Minnesota. Now, outside of her music career, Annie is a mother of three and works as a death doula, accompanying people who are dying and supporting their families. Families, excuse me. Davina Lozier is the leader of the Twin Cities-based jazz blues band Davina and the Vagabonds. With their band, Davina has released a number of critically acclaimed albums and toured extensively throughout the United States and around the world. And Nazim is one half of the Minnesota-based hip-hop group Blood Smoke Body, alongside his longtime collaborator and friend, Spencer Joles. His work is influenced by legends like Tupac and Bob Marley and includes stories of homelessness, family, business, and cultivating land. 
There will be an audience Q&A section toward the end of the conversation, so please feel free to throw your questions for the panel in the Q&A box during the webinar. There's an option to submit questions anonymously as well. I want to say that Line Check is made possible in part by the Minnesota Legacy Amendments Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the members of Minnesota Public Radio. To kick off tonight's conversation, I'll turn things over to Sarah Souter Johnson. Hello, thank you, Sean. Hey, panelists. Hey, listeners. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, for the sake of this conversation, we are going to define mental health very broadly. Okay. I want to start us off by just saying that every single person has mental health or mental illness to some degree, and that changes throughout our lifetimes. Okay, Let's just get us all in that frame of uh, frame of mind. Annie, I want to start with you. Uh, tell us what did the past year with the pandemic, loss of income from music, the murder of George Floyd, and spotlighting police brutality and violence, uprising around race. Um, in all of these other community tensions, what did that do to your mental health? What it did for my mental health was put me in a space of <clears throat> standing before the very things that I have to disassociate from on a daily basis as a black woman for my survival, living in a world, living in a society, doing business, existing where my life and who I am is not seen as worthy and not being treated as a human. So, and it also brought attention, and that sounds really generic. Um, I think people, it was like being a victim who's been telling people for years what's been happening, what my reality is, what my survival is, what my existence is. And I have to hear people, white people, uh, who witness footage to finally believe me when I do get vulnerable enough to be open about my existence and what transpires and what it's like to be me in, in all of these interpersonal as well as business things. So it was, it was a, um, a great revelation. It was more just to sit back and watch people even begin to get hip to really how disturbing and soul crushing and spiritually um, uh, overwhelming it is for brown and black people. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Annie. Um, Nazim, what have you noticed about your mental health this year? Well, with the George Floyd thing, like, it was crazy because I drove past, me and Spencer drove past uh, right before they killed him. We were on our way to get tacos. Oh my gosh. And we saw um, we saw him like pleading with the cop. Like, I, like he was kind of pleading with the cop and the cop had his hand on his gun. It was real aggressive. So it was just, and, and then going, going home and thinking about that. And then you see the news and then you're like, wow. Like they ended up killing him. And then just kind of dealing with that is it, it was a little tough. And then and then you going through regular life, you know what I mean? Just trying to trying to succeed in your life and be healthy, but you gotta worry about the cops and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. So it does something to your mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Davina, tell us about your experience this past year. I mean, it's I can't uh of course, it affected me 100%. I mean, it, it's uh, a lot to talk about just this past year. Um, <clears throat> I believe it prioritized a lot for me. It allowed me to. It allowed me to 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 sit and listen a lot more. Um, I haven't really had a chance because I've just been trying to sur survive in this. Uh, the music industry, you know, just working so much. So um, it really showed me uh, different paths to go on. Um, it, it taught me how to, um, that tons of communication needs to be had, um, that the shadows around me are people. I think that's mm. a huge thing, um, just because I was go, 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 go all the time. Um, but it definitely changed my priorities on so many 
so many different levels. I don't know if we'll have time, you know, just yeah. with the civil unrest, of course, you know, I live, you know, um, right three blocks away from the third precinct. Um, I mean, there's just, there's so many levels of, I think, uh, what this past year and a half um, has affected everybody, me and everybody around us, you know, um, and hopefully for the better in a lot of ways. So. Absolutely. Well, we're, I mean, we're talking about these external factors, but the reality is no one's immune to struggling at any point, right? Whether that's organic, um, due to our brain and chemical health, uh, the traumas we experience, identity pieces like you have all alluded to, financial stress, relational stress, systemic oppression, grief, and a global pandemic, yeah. right? It was like so, an existential crisis every five <laughs> minutes, you know, yeah. and how, how you can deal with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I've felt that too. On the flip side, we're also all really capable of taking care of ourselves, like, given the right tools I and will the right say time. That, I will say that like the, the pandemic and then the, the external struggles and everybody, like everything going crazy, it, it could teach you how resilient you are as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, could, it could bring you back to your like in, internal uh, space of peace. I like that. So because we can take care of ourselves and we call that self-care, right? And mm -hmm. it can help us thrive. Mm -hmm. So Nazim, you want to speak on that? Yeah. Or else, what, what yeah. What works for you? What works for you? What works for me? Mm -hmm. um, I got to try to, I got to try to wake up kind of early. I got to get sleep. I have to stay active. I have to sweat, you know, the, the toxins out from the food, from the beef and all that. Uh, you got to get sunshine. Um, stay creative. Stay hungry for knowledge. Stay hungry for, for good food. Stay hungry for, for your family, for love. And just, um, you know, meditation helps. Um, read inspirational things. You know what I mean? Stay, stay away from media that might, might be mentally damaging. Mm -hmm. Great. Ce yeah. Celebrate, celebrate who you are. Celebrate your culture. Celebrate mm -hmm. your friends. Celebrate your family. Celebrate your talents. Yeah, we don't we don't glamorize that part, <laughs> but I like it. Yeah. Um, Davina, what are some of your strategies for taking care of yourself to stay or try to find mental wellness and a sense of uh, a stability? Um, I think through a lot of ways. Um, I mean, the fundamentals are there for me. And unfortunately, I struggle with the fundamentals of day to day adulting. It's yeah. crazy, you know, like eat, you know, eat when you're hungry, take your meds, you need to, you know, um, take a bath, you smell, you know, just like the fundamentals in general. Um, I know it sounds silly, but, you know, because I was always so go, 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 um, I never really had an opportunity to learn how to do those things in a stable and like I had to learn how to be in my house again because I was on tour 200 days. So like it's a different structure. So I had to kind of do the fundamentals, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, to be honest with you, self-care, I don't feel necessarily needs to be candy coated based upon like matching your lip liner and if your nails are done. I think self-care in a lot of ways is really just being honest and working on things that are difficult. Um, I know that that doesn't seem pretty, but I think that that's a really important thing to always bring up as well, um, is that self-care is mental self-care. It's, it's being honest. It's, it's approaching things that uh, normally are really scary to approach, um, you know, and communicating that with yourself and the people around you. So I think that that was a big thing for me. Um, I've never had a problem with using my words. The problem was I was talking them about them, I was using my words and, and what I feel I shouldn't have been prioritizing. Yeah, I'm tired, but let's talk about deeper issues, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and so I think that that's important too. Um, obviously I haven't done my nails in a long time, so I'm just gonna say that, but, um, there's more to self-care than, than just physical self-care. It's mental and it's eating well, and it's, um, it's working through trauma period. Mm. Yes. So. Yeah, not just bubble baths. No. I mean, do that and... I mean, cry in a bubble bath if you need to. You know yeah. what I mean? You can, like, <laughs> double up on it. But, like, you know, all in all, I think uh, 
you know, we, we live in a really guarded world. People are, you know, I think the number one problem is ego and fear for me mm. specifically when I look around, you know, and I think, uh, you know, looking at why that that is a problem <laughs> and why you think you pick your, your fear and your ego first, you know, uh, start looking at, like I said, the shadows around you because they're people, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of, a lot of people get like ego mixed up with like, uh, like arrogance. Oh, but even thinking you're like a, a bad person. That's yeah. The, you, know, you know what I mean? So some people got to realize like the idea of oneself, you're too wrapped up in, in, the, in the idea of who you are, but that's irrelevant. You know what I mean? Cause at the end of the day, you're, you're a soul. Hmm. Yeah. I agree with you 100% Nazim. I think that's a really good thing to bring up. You know, you're not, it's not just puffing yourself up. Mm-hmm. It's a defensive and it's also a scare thing. I mean, that's yeah. still your ego, you know? So I think you're 100% right, 100. I think um, an important part of, I, personally, my self-care was doing whatever it took to maintain my being sound of mind. So what that was for me was to do the work of removing, whether that was individuals, whether that was like the hard work of going through my life and examining where I was giving my energy and who and what I was allowing to deplete me and what in my life Am I allowing to come in? And we have a a, a beautiful exchange of energy where I give, you take, and then I take and give. And and it's a beautiful going back and forth. And I realized I was giving my energy away and allowing myself to be depleted. Mm -hmm. And so what I started to do, what my spirit actually started to do for me was to go and get my energy back and collect it back. And then there was restoration and there was healing that started with that. And being able to say, I am valuable enough to where I'm going to say no. I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to be particular and intentional about where my energy goes. And I'm not talking about like anything, you know, I'm going to yoga. It was like, no, I'm not gonna talk to this person today. Mm -hmm. This person, this white person wants me to validate them while I'm grieving. They don't even care about my grief. They're checking in on me, they're checking in because they want me to validate them in the heart of my grief and suffering. And me politely saying, thank you for checking in. However, don't contact me anymore. I'll Mm -hmm. I'll reach out to you. So you have to protect your energy. Absolutely. And being able to to, um, do the work that it takes, that means letting go of people. That means letting go of situations, even approaching being a musician. Where am I giving my time to? Who am I lending my, who am I working with to to put my name in something? Do they really support the community? Are they taking my money? Am I fulfilling a grant? Like all of these things I started to realize I have to examine, you know, and be willing to make those tough decisions to maintain my sound of mind and, you know, have integrity and intention with what I do and not to appease people or play a game that was never set up for me to win in the first place. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're talking about uh, relationships. Oh yeah. And, you know, we all rely on feedback from other people to reassure us, to let us know we're okay. And in many ways this past year, people didn't always have people, right? We didn't always have People, a lot of people were isolated. A lot of people lived alone. Other people had really unhealthy situations with those who they lived with. And, uh, you know, Nazim, I've heard you talk in particular about how important your friend group is and your bandmates, your roommates, and how much your community contributes to you. So what was that like to be, to, to have that shrink? Well, I will say, see, a few years ago, I had, like five years ago, I had to get sober and like um, change my life and, and, and remove myself from a lot of situations. So with that, my my social group, or immediate friend group that I saw on a day to day basis, it it got a lot smaller and it was basically it the does only- for yeah. sure when you get sober, <laughs> mm-hmm. absolutely. It, it was only the people that were like on the same wave as me, like trying to get healthy, trying to be sober and and and, and live good. So. Like when the pandemic happened, it was still the, that core group of people with me. Okay. Mm-hmm. But but family though, like certain family members I didn't see for like 
Like my, I couldn't see my grandmother for a while, cousins and like that. So, so that was a little tough. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, um, Annie. What about you? Where would you find you know with setting up more of those boundaries and realizing these people don't work for me anymore? This does right. not fit in my life. I realized that it was work to maintain relationships. I had taken that for granted, being a musician, seeing you know my peers at festivals or venues, knowing that I was going to run into people. That was going to be my social interaction. I'm a mom of three, so I'm already flighty anyways, and I'm very introverted. So to get me to leave my house and I'm not making money or you know mm-hmm. <laughs> hustling, I realized like, I have to call people. I have to, re- you know, and that was really tough for me. And so I, I realized that that's something that, you know, um, struck me that if it's not presented to me in my work or how that was showing up, then I didn't really pursue it. I, I was very isolated and okay with it, you know, like I am um, to an extent, to an, to an extent, you know, I miss my friends. I miss going to the concerts, showing up, um, it was very humbling, but then there was a part of me, there was a relief. There was a relief to be home, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, enjoy my time at home and, and invest in my family again, or try to anyway, you know? Yeah. Well, and Davina, you're known for your hustle. You play. Mm. Damn, what? I know. Damn, oh, I. you are. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I know you. <laughs> you went from playing 200 plus nights a year yeah. to being grounded at home. Yeah. You, you alluded to it. I want to know more about what that was like for you to live, how, learn how to live at home. I mean, kind of similar to what Annie was saying, you know, it really uh, just put things into check a little bit. I mean, it was just, it was a struggle, but it also, unfortunately, because of the circumstances, it also was a blessing. Like I hate, mm. you know, and I, I think Annie and I have even talked about that. And it's, it's hard to say that, you know, when, when the pandemic was looming and, and, I was in full force, you know, you're kind of like, well, this is the healing that I need to have, you know, um, and there's nothing like being inside my head. Woo. <laughs> so I had so much time just to like, you know, uh, to kind of break through a few things, but it was, it was a, a lot of healing and, and, you know, I do believe in my energy as currency, you know, um, also mm-hmm. just as what Annie said, you know, we've even discussed, you know, I think she sent me like a meme about, you know, let's kind of the basis of let's not glamorize being busy anymore. You know, I think in a lot of ways, the hustle shouldn't be glamorized, uh, because it can truly, um, kind of hurt your soul, especially when you're doing creative work as a a job, you know, uh, that's really hard to balance if you have one gig a year as well, (laughs) you know, it's just a hard Mm -hmm. line to, to, to be on, you know, but, um, do you think that has to do with that? You are the performance piece and people are expecting that, that energy from you and, or, when yeah. Say- I mean, I don't, I don't really, I don't have a huge community around me. You know, I do have my band members, but in a lot of ways I'm boss lady, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of how honest can they be with me, you know, and mm-hmm. how, how much of a friendship do you have? But I do have my, you know, my husband and I do have some of my bandmates, you know, the, uh, my drummer and I are really tight. We've been playing for 15 years and we are, we both go heavy, like quick, we're like, how are you doing? Well, let's sit down a little bit. And, you know, so I do have a couple of people and I've reached out to Annie too. Uh, you know, I, I don't talk to a lot of musicians cause like she said, that's like the, so like, you're just busy. You're busy hustling. You have no life. Um, and that's sometimes the unfortunate part of being in this industry, uh, but it also depends on what your goals are. And my goals are not, I'm 42. My goals are not to be you know, famous pop star, you know, when I first started in my twenties, hot little thing, I thought I was going to make all this money and I was going to be, you know, this, this famous person. And now it's really just showed me, um, how music is the ultimate utmost important thing to me, not my face, Mm -hmm. not what I'm wearing, you know, um, not how many likes I got on social media, you know, um, if I have all the gigs, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And that's really where I'm, 
well, not that I still call me folks, if you need someone to work, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but seriously though, like that's what happened. I realized that I, I can still eat if I'm not working 200 plus dates, I can still, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm struggling financially. Sure. Cause this was devastating, devastating. If you make money through art, uh, especially entertainment, it, it, it was, but I'm still here. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm uh, breathing a lot better. You know, um, I don't have to be this constant, like, hello, Mahani, hello, my, you know? So I think in, in a lot of ways, um, that's kind of what it taught me uh, to that I'm going to survive. <laughs> like, like Nazim said, like resiliency, you know, it, it really showed me that like, um, um, I am a survivor, but I don't have to constantly fight anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to prove to anybody, yeah, you know, I just want to be yeah. happy, healthy, have the right people in my life. And that's literally so much to learn in a year, but that's literally what I learned, you know, um, huge lessons, huge, mm. huge. Yeah. 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 I want to shift us a little bit. Um, I saw a Facebook post that said, I should just turn over my stimulus check to the liquor store. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> that was, you know, I don't know what, December, no. something like that. <laughs> ah. That's a really bad idea. Whoever yeah, posted you know, that. Well, like... it, was, it was all, it was the same, you know, like it's wine o'clock somewhere yeah, kind of attitude. And the heavy reliance on alcohol and other substances to cope is troublesome in general, right? And detrimental to people whose mental health hinges on sobriety. So I saw that Facebook post, uh, that kind of thing. I just mm -mm, can't, can't handle it, can't stomach that. Yeah, uh, but for those of you, go ahead, yeah. I was gonna say the alcohol just makes it worse. Mm. You get hung over, you get Well, sad. so for those of you who choose a sober lifestyle or who in are in recovery, tell us about that. What is that kind of thinking do to you, particularly if you're sitting at home all this time to reflect and it's like, oh, that, that works for me. I can cope in that way, you know, or if that served that purpose for you at some point in your life. Well, they say, they say uh, it, admitting is the first step. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to AA, but I knew the first step. And it's, it's a very true statement because if you, if you think little things like, oh, I could just have a beer, you know, and then you end up having like four or you say, I'm not going to drink hard liquor. And then you, you have four beers and then you drink some whiskey. You know what I mean? Like when, mm -hmm. when you're not honest with yourself, you're going to play yourself. Because it's like, who, mm -hmm. who are you putting up the front for? Because at the end of the day, you're only hurting you and your loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. You know, I, um, I'm a recovering IV user. I mean, I have, you know, uh, a lot of years, decades under my belt now being sober, but I mean, I can definitely tell you that um, there, you know, sobriety isn't easy, you know, it's not. And it was definitely testing, you know, the waters of like stinking thinking, I guess, if you've worked the tables, you know, there's those sayings. And, you know, there was definitely a few times where I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to be real right now because mm -hmm. stuff is way real. It's real all around me. I can't handle it. It's killing my soul. Can I just maybe have a drink just to chill out, just so I don't have to, you know? And I don't know about you, but I don't need to be tased and put into the jail, which is literally what happens to me when I drink. So I think like, you know, um, you know, of course, even if you have 20, 30, 40 years under your belt, you know, uh, there's just something I know I can't drink, even though it's cunning and baffling. And sometimes I can, you know, think, oh, well, maybe just one and, you know, and it'll be okay. You know, there's definitely that it still happens. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I think people are amazing if they say they have that much sobriety and they don't once think about it. I mean, you get triggered by smells, you get triggered by stress, you get brain. your brain does that to you, mm -hmm. you know, so you just have to keep talking about it like you are, Sarah, keep talking about it like you are, Nazim, have the people around you that are going to be like, you know, real to mm -hmm. allow you to be honest with yourself, too, because without that, you know, it's a slippery slope. 
but I can tell you I wouldn't be here on this panel if I started drinking over the over the pandemic and all the stuff that was happening. Like I literally w I wouldn't be capable to have, you know, um, have the balance to do that. And that enough is scary for me to not do it. So I think part of the work that comes with being sober is the willingness to feel and the willingness to be present and to allow yourself to experience things fully. And yeah. so when you've had time to deal with things and you get the tools, it's not the first go-to unless, you know, some people are wired. For me, I'm a, I'm a prob, you know, a problem drinker. So, you know, when I've experienced death or when I've experienced certain things, I'll drink, you know, cause I know I need it at that time. And then I do come out of it. But for the first time in a long time, I realized when everything went down, like I wanted to be present. I'm a mom and I had to be on my game because I was scared. I was so scared. Everything that I knew happened in an instant. And I was so agitated and scared, but I felt like I had to be present for my kids because they were getting up in the middle of the night because they had lost their friends. They had lost their school. They lost everything. I lost my, I don't know what the hell's happening. So I had to be sober to put on the pretense, mm -hmm. even though I'm up at 3 a.m. like, I got, you know, I got nothing. So I was, I was convicted and I got drunk a few times or tipsy, but then I don't recover the way I used to. My body's like enough, you know, mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it's like toxic for me. Like I pay for it. I have to drink like two gallons of water just to enjoy a glass of wine, seriously. So like, but then I just make up for it because then I eat extra pasta or some shit like that. But anyway, oh, I love <laughs> pasta. you know, so, but, but I had to like be present and it felt good. You know, it felt good mm. to, um, and I'm not judging anybody that way, but for me, for the first time, it was like, okay, Annie, you know, watch some of the house on the prairie. I don't know. Do what you got some comfort. <laughs> I have to say, I'm surprised that to hear you say that. <laughs> pa has to go to one of yeah. son because he's hooked on opium. I don't know. But there's, there's a hailstorm. It ruined their crops, Annie. You got to watch that. Yeah, and I baked a lot, you know, so I just went back to things of that nature. But I felt, you know, um, I really had to be present for my kids, you know. So you had, an, you, that was your motivation for them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get to gap out. I didn't get to, to numb out, you know? Mm -hmm. I still disassociated in different ways, but in that way, I didn't get to numb out, you know? Well, so this idea of being present, I don't, I don't know that, uh, you know, we're using that word, and, and I think probably a lot of people understand what that means, but I think it's really awareness and really paying attention and feeling the feelings, sitting with them and letting them come um, like waves, you know, I like to say two things. One is that feelings are not forever. No feeling lasts very long at all. Actually, it's like our reaction to it that lasts. Um, and uh, feelings are not facts, you know, like mm -hmm. they are not facts. They, we experience them. It feels very strongly that experience is real, but they are not facts. So, if you think about those two things, I think it helps us be more present and then know that that too shall pass, um, even if it is really, really hard and we'd rather check out. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think I used to always say like, um, I think it's just more punk rock to be sober, you know, because mm -hmm. I think when I started, you know, using, I was just this like, you know, kid with an attitude and like I was just cooler than them all and you know and then I just had this mighty huge addiction problem and I gotta tell you like for me being the best addict because I was I was the best using addict in my group like I knew what to do what I was the best mm -hmm. you know and then I realized it's just so much it's just so much better for the people around you and your soul to be able to be honest e even if it's a bit much you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a bit much, but even if it's a bit much, you know, it's, it's good to sit with that and it's more hardcore and that's just how you're going to get through it, you know, mm -hmm. is, is to, to muster through it as much as you possibly and sit with it. Like you said, that's so important. I agree. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know a number of people who right now are experiencing or have had recent relapses and they're just wrestling their way back to a sense of equilibrium. What do you want them to know? Oh, 
Or just like, uh, this you mean too to, shall pass. Who, you can go. Oh, no, no, no. Please, Nazim. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please, 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 please. Um, you're good. Um, basically, you don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. in, a, in a toxic way. But definitely take a good look at yourself. And, and you got to be accountable for what you did. Mm -hmm. But it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? You got tomorrow. So just keep keep building healthy habits and and try to do something you love every day. If you if you love to work out, then you do that. If you like to make music, do that. If you love to to bird watch, then go outside and look at some birds. But just don't 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 dwell on don't dwell on things. Just just be active and and, and put activities in your life that nourish you. Yeah. I like to watch birds. Just putting that out there. You got too. some cardinals in the backyard. I, I bird watch. That's nice. I should let you borrow my. I have binoculars that were my dad's. <laughs> I'll bring them over, drop them off. Right. Yeah. yeah. Davina, you have to uh, look up a picture of an indigo bunting. Do you know what that is? <gasps> no. It's my new favorite bird. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. I'm assuming it's like a purpley. It's indica. Just the perfect color. Oh. I'm going to Google it. Should I Google it now? Probably later. Probably later. Huh? Probably later. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> well, I want to highlight a resource here for any musicians who are listening called Passenger Recovery. Passenger was started by Chris Tate, who's a friend of mine out of Detroit. He's from the rock band Electric Six. And Passenger helps musicians find support meetings as well as clean nice. and sober green rooms while they're touring. It's nice. really, really cool. So they also host an online meeting for music industry folks each week uh, on their website, which we'll share here in the chat. Um, you can find out more and get a link to that anonymous meeting. But they're, mm -hmm. they are a wonderful resource. Very happy to call them friends. That's cool. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be in the panel at like three in the morning. Like my gig was horrible. The sound <laughs> guy was miserable. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, we've, we've spoken about this a bit, um, but I know a lot of artists have really wrestled with their identity as artists while out of work and with so much time to just reflect. And it's kind of like, okay, yeah, that was nice for a while. So much time is passing. I'm really kind of over the reflecting and I'm ready to decide what I'm going to do next. So what is changing about the way you do your music business now? Are you going back to your past ways or are you going to make some changes? Annie, oh, no. let's hear it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm ready for this. I have gotten to a space of refining and, you know, who I want to be associated with, how I want to represent myself, and then really seeing what venues, festivals, you know, community hubs who promote themselves as certain things and really how they're practicing behind the scenes. So for me, I don't feel compelled to jump anymore. I don't feel compelled to um, engage in self-betrayal for a gig. You know, um, I try to choose with a lot of intention. I try to be respectful to myself and my worthiness of where mm. I should be, you know. Um, it's a new practice for me because in my, you know, experience, I've hustled, you know, grocery money. Sometimes it's really good fancy, you know, target money. Sometimes it's quick trip money, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it shows up in different ways, but at this point it's about feeding my spirit and honoring my spirit. So when I, when I go into something and if, especially if I hear that there's some BS taking place behind the scenes that may have happened with another artist or there's a practice, I don't have this mentality. Well, if it doesn't affect me, then that doesn't matter. It's very much so like, it doesn't need to affect me. If you're not t treating artists correctly, or you're engaging in certain things, I don't want to be a part of it. Or I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you about it, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to change and to have a conversation. Or, you know, so um, those are the things that now I just trust that was for me is for me. And I always want to be a, about the encouragement and uplifting of Black and Brown people, of women, uh, recovering people, you know, um, it's, so, it's so incredibly important to me to be a part of anything that's about community and supporting people and offering a, a safe space, you know? Yeah. So I'm not gonna say yes, just to say yes anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like it, good. Um, and for me, um, 
it kind of brought me back to a place where 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 I was when I was like uh, young and just started creating. <laughs> it made me more more hungry because I realized like tomorrow, you know, all hell could break loose. The world could end. You don't know what's about to happen. But but did you give the world the music? Hmm. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> like with me, I just life, love that so much. <laughs> with my life, like I, it's it's not really about like I don't know. It's like I have to do it. I have to make the music, and I have to make more and more of it. So I've just been creating like like at a twice as much and just just twice as hungry and just trying to get back to that hunger that I had when I was a child because the stakes are so high, life is so crazy and, and somebody has to document it. And, and who, you know what I'm saying? Who better than me? Cause we, we here, we're mm-hmm. in Minneapolis, it, it, it's happening. We see it. So, yeah. so it just- You're a truth there. teller, you know, mm-hmm. you're a truth teller. That's, the, that's, that's what's up. Nazim, can you say more about um, that, that part about, it's like when I was a child are you feeling like a lot of, is that coming back for you these days? You well, feeling yeah, just familiar? Like, yeah, when I started, when I started uh, creating, it was about like testing myself and just seeing, just seeing what type of different flows and different metaphors mm-hmm. and different things I could do musically. So I, I don't know what happened. I think I might've refound, uh, connected back with the love of music or, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know, but. It sounds to me like you're talking about purpose. Purpose, boom. Boom. Purpose. Purpose. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and Beautiful. everybody has purpose too. I think you should, mm-hmm. everybody's important. You know what I mean? Some people say we don't matter, but it's like, why, why are you alive? Like do something with it. If you got something to say, then say it. If you got something to show people, show people. Even if you think nobody wants to see it, just, just, just keep doing it. Cause, cause there's million, there's so many people out there that millions of people want to hear what any given person has to say. Absolutely. It's easy. I think to Nazim, when you're talking about that, I think it's like, it's easy when you're, I don't know if you feel this way too, Annie, to kind of get lost and forget your purpose and forget your light just in the day-to-day things. I think when you struggle just in general, you know, um, and I think it gets lost. So even I know Nazim talking to him now and talking to you, Annie, now today is lighting a fire under my tush because it's really easy for me to lose my gratitude. And I think, um, you know, we need to be grateful for ourselves. And I'm grateful for you and Sarah and Annie, um, you know, because it's when you lose when you lose that fire and you lose that understanding that we all have a purpose and we're all truth tellers. Um, our truth, and we try, I try to tell other people's truths, but all I can do is really tell my truth, you know, and what I see. But um, I think it's just important to remember that we do have a purpose. And um, I can tell just, I don't even know you, Nazim, but I can tell just by talking to you um, how bright your purpose is and how bright you are. I've talked to Annie. Annie is brilliant and bright. I knew right from the first time I met her 20 years ago, you know, that's just how it is. But it's, it's, it's yeah. nice to have just to talk to you guys now today <clears throat> to allow me to understand that uh, I have a purpose too. And that like, I want to be on this ride with y'all, you know what I mean? Mm. It's really cool and uplifting. So. And I think that's part of the survival, you know, when you start to get elevated and transition into your calling, it's like, knowing that you have a gift, knowing that you have something to share and you kind of, there's a time where you have to hone that, you have to hone that gift and that talent. And a lot of times the purpose doesn't come right away. You know, Mm -hmm. you're getting prepared to step into that purpose by honing this beautiful gift and talent and getting that edge and being hungry and being a survivor. And then as you get refined, I I believe we're presented spiritually to start going, okay, now you've gotten your healing and you're Mm -hmm. good. Now it's time for you to go out and connect and share that it's, it's, it's just a whole different level of growth. And so I honor that. Like, I honor that hungriness. I honor that, like, I'm coming on stage and I'm coming for you. Mm-hmm. I needed to have that. I needed that because I'm a foster kid. I'm a survivor of a lot of things. I was not intended to do anything with my life. Nothing. There was never. And when I was growing up, I was like graduate from high school and try not to have a baby when you're 14. Mm-hmm. There was no this big spirit. There was none of that. 
So I needed to be in that space of, of hunger and I'm like, wow, I can do something. You I needed can. That. It wasn't yeah. until I got that healing that I was able to come back and be like, okay, now I'm aware and I've been shown that I am worthy. Even if I didn't have this talent, I'm still worthy. We're still worthy. Yeah. And I it's a big part of what happened during this pandemic. What do you do when your identity is taken away? And people tell you that you're, they tell you that's all you are. You don't talk about politics. You don't talk about anything else. You don't mm -hmm. talk about anything else. You go play your song. What was yeah. taken away? Yeah. Now what? You get to step into these other dimensions that people want to take from you. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of us were empowered and reminded of the purpose that goes beyond the music. Absolutely. You know? You're going to make me cry, Annie. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I also know some faces. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I think it's. I think our our art will will, uh, just blossom in that way. You know. I mean, what more can you give people than honesty? And what more can you give people than um, melting their faces with honesty, telling them your story? You know. I mean, I'm serious. And that's. You know, uh, once again, the fundamentals of gratitude, you know, and 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 being grateful, you know, that we we can do that in an honest because there's people out there that can't be honest with themselves at this point, you know, still, still after all this stuff that happened, you know, over the past year, they're still struggling, oh. you know, and, and that's cool. <laughs> do what they need to do, you know, um, but I hope, you know, that they can all face what we're facing and that's the edge and the rawness of real life on so many different levels, you know, individually, you know, and as a community, you know, so. Yeah, well, I'm just hearing so much about, um, you know, I, I think of myself and I think of, I don't know anyone who didn't turn to music, turn to the arts, turn to uh, entertainment for comfort, for healing, for an escape. Uh, whatever it might be throughout the entire, well, throughout their lifetimes, let alone when we're all stuck at home. And so that it was especially happening in the past year. And for those of you listening, for those of you nodding along tonight, remember, these are the real people on the other side of that music, on the other side of that art, who are pouring out themselves and uh, bringing, bringing you what you need through their art. So you also have a part to play. We all do as consumers of that art, as enjoyers and lovers of musicians ourselves. So support these people, buy their music, buy their merch, go to their shows, become their patrons. What else can they do for you? Tell all of their friends about you. Um, and of course, get out there and support local. Let's get local, let's get to our venues and our record stores. And all of that contributes to the well being of music in Minnesota. And when our systems are healthier, each one of these people gets to be. It's really important. I'm so grateful for y'all open up, up like this. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Davina, did you want to say anything about how your business is going to change? <laughs> Oh. Well, you know, uh, I'm not really a beacon of light sometimes with the business because it's it's really uh, I'm not trying to be like, woe is me. But I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people are unaware of um, when you're doing this as a business. So it is my uh, it is my goal as well to be very to do my research, to listen to other musicians, if there is venues that um, aren't really treating artists correctly, because there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that even locally, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be, I'm not gonna be like, and it's this rhymes with this. No, I'm just, but I'm not gonna do that. But you wow. know, it, it, it can be, it can be an issue. And, and there's also yeah. problems within uh, the community of musicians as well, you know, which, mm -hmm. and I think that needs to be talked about more, you know, I think, uh, it needs to be discussed. Um, I'm not talking about like cancel culture per se accountability. I think Annie and I've actually talked about that a lot. It's mm -hmm. really important for that. And I'm going to be looking for that as well. Um, I'm not going to be working as much. I'm not going to get underpaid anymore. 
I'm not going to jump just like Annie said. I'm not going to allow venue owners or promoters to um, downplay my role uh, as a, as, as a, a woman in this industry, um, you know, and, and just many things like that. Um, this point forward, and this has been my goal, you know, it just, the pandemic and the things that happened was just the trigger for me where um, I just, I don't give AF anymore. Like, I'm just like, I'm done. You know, I just want to be myself, be honest and whatever the outcome is, you know, with my music, be honest with me, be honest with business, be honest with the people around me, be honest just in general. And no matter what, um, it's going to be okay. Cause at least I know I'm doing everything I can to be a better person, not just for me, but for the young ladies and the young men behind me that are going to be trying to do what I'm doing. You know, I want to set the stage. It takes a really long time for progression. I mean, come on, look around you, you know, and, but if I can be that small part where I can make small changes, then I'm going to do it. Cause you know, I think that there's a lot more support can be had between the venues and the artists and artists and artists. So that's just kind of what I'm doing. Um, you know, I'm not going to sweat uh, the small stuff. I'm going to try to pick my battles the best I can <laughs> and things like that, you know. Um, but, you know, business wise, I mean, I don't I can't tell you. Uh, I don't I think everything could have possibly I've experienced in this business. I, I really do. And Annie's even said you should write a book, you know, Ooh, I <laughs> um, love that book. You know, but I'm serious. I mean, it's crazy mm -hmm. some of the stuff I've seen, um, you know, and some of the stuff I've even done and some of the stuff, you know. So, but um, I just want to be healthy and happy and I want to connect with people. I want to change people's lives. I want to make people cry. I want to make people laugh. I want people to have a good time. I want them to dance. And I want it to be that simple, you know. I want it just to for people just to to be themselves and to learn that. And I don't know if I can do that by writing a song, but I'm going to keep trying, you know? So, mm. yeah. Beautiful. Love that. So people are getting out from behind our screens, even though it's a little ironic to say that right now. I wish I could hug y'all in person. Um, but now that you are returning to performing in person, how does that feel? Are we having stage fright? Some anxiety Dave. coming up? <laughs> What's... What's going on? It's different for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I feel like I get stage fright slightly every time, but it's like, I want to be there. You know what I mean? I'll be sure. eating, eating out the butterflies no matter what, but I'm, I'm super excited to get back into performing. And yeah, it's about to be crazy. We'll get it. Maybe you and Annie and I can get a text chain and you can be like, I'm going up in five minutes and we'll be like, go get them. We'll be the <laughs> we? <laughs> no, it's like, you know, it's like when you feel like, Say you're about to, um, you're going into battle, and you're about to jump out of airplane. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that it's good to have those nerves because you're about yeah. to, do, you're about to do something that you care about. So like, if I wasn't nervous, then it's like, should I even yeah. do it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, my muscle memory hasn't kicked in, and that's okay because I think I'm, I'm in a different space than where I was, you know, a year and a half ago. So it's like I approach things a lot differently, you know. Um, in my delivery and stuff like that. But I feel like I'm starting over in a lot of ways. You know, I feel like that swagger that I had and that confidence and, and knowing where everything was going to be and what I was going to do and it was kind of orchestrated is like gone, you know, is gone. <laughs> so it's, it's very humbling, but I think it's good to go to another level, you know, with the performance and the connecting. So, but yeah, I stutter during my shows. I forget my words. I'm like, you know, it is, yeah, it's not where I was. And that's tough because I worked really hard to, to have a strong show and to have a, be smooth and be confident. And now it's like, I'm not as confident. You know, I'm not as confident. And, and I get it back. It's kind of, I have moments and I hype myself up. Like, like uh, melting faces is so like, I'm, oh, yeah, <laughs> like gladiator, you know. <laughs> Are you not in your day? You know, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> but, but that's how I feel. Like you know, that I go into the corner. I'm like, I don't know what's it, you know. So, um, but 
That's all right. I think everybody goes to that. Surgeons, pilot. Well, hopefully not pilots. You know. <laughs> Yeah. All the time. Well, they got so, uh, automated. Yeah, they got autopilot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think Annie too, like, you know, I've done a couple gigs and so have you. And I, I noticed that too. It's like, oh, you know, people are like, oh, it's like riding a bike, you know, and you're like, it is. It's very different. Mm -hmm. uh, some things are the same, but I think, you know, well, BMX. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You doing Yeah. Shit. Yeah. But yeah. I think in a lot of ways, you being honest with the awkwardness, because that's what I, I'm, well, at least this is what I'm lying to myself maybe about when I stumble on my words. But I mean, there's a certain truth to like the honesty and the humility that you're showing people when you do those things. And like you said, your muscle memory hasn't caught up. Well, it's kind of probably good, you know, because you're going to be learning new tricks of the trade for your own self. And it's not a bag of tricks, though. The thing is, it's just you being honest. I, th I really, truly, in my heart, know 100% that that is what is the best thing for the audience and for you, you know? And so you figure, you know, like we put so much pressure on ourselves in general, how we're going to perform, how we look, you know, what are other musicians thinking of us, you know, those things, you know, and, and that's you getting in front of yourself. And I do it all the time and I'm done. You know, I don't need to compare. I'm eating off my own plate. You know, if I cooked wrong and it tastes like crap, fine. I'll deal with it. You know, but in other words, but the people still got to love me even if I burnt the toast. Like, I'm sorry, but still just love my toast that I worked really hard on. You know, I don't know why <laughs> I'm using. You still have to say thank you. Yeah, yeah. but you thank also you have to see time. the vulnerability in it too. Yeah. Like, you know, we're doing so much by putting our heart on our sleeves and just laying it out there. I mean, that's literally what we're doing. Yeah, we're taking some... everything and just, blah, you know, and if people have an issue with it, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, got, you know, it's some, not worth it, you know? So. We got some new songs where the, the lyrics are like almost awkwardly honest in some points, you know? Yeah. But the fans, they don't really know that. But I'll be saying some, some funny things. But you do, you know, and, and they will. Like once they're fans and they, they absorb your energy, they'll kind of get it, you know? It's, I don't know. I, I like that. I love seeing that people are human because we are, you know? So. Well, yeah. and we are all works in progress. Yep. Right? I certainly hope people extend that same grace to me. I am. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Make a mistake. Let's do it. I'm full of mistakes. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to close up this part of our um, conversation tonight and then take some Q&A. But I want to know what's one thing you'd like to leave the listeners with tonight. So this might be a mental health tip, a self-care strategy, some words of advice, or just sort of a synopsis of where you're at right now. Uh, Nazim, hit it. Um, I'd say gratitude mm. is so important. I'm about to get a tattooed on my face. But you have to be grateful because when you're grateful, your mind can work better. You know what I mean? You'll be in a mental space to think of new ideas. So gratitude. 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 Mm -hmm. Nice. Davina, how about you? It totally is on the same page as me because that that's literally what I wrote down. But um, you did your homework. I did. Um, nice. Yeah, I did. Um, just like him, I think gratitude, like I, there's a quote and like gratitude is the parent of all other virtues, I think is, is mm -hmm. what the quote is. And it is, you know, very much so stating that if you're grateful, even if you just, you know, I have to make a list every day for gratitude. So I write three things down and with the mental illness that I have, mental illnesses that I have, um, sometimes I can't do that. So sometimes I'll just be like, I'm grateful I can hold a pen, you know, but, <laughs> that's but that's where I get, that's where my head is, you know, and I put, you know, just to treat music and your gift and your presence, like you were saying, and your passion, I put treat it as a gift for you to lean on, rise up with, meditate with, be grateful for. And be uh, forgiving with yourself in the process. I think that's huge. Shame is a huge thing uh, that can really deteriorate any type of promise that you can have within your heart 
it's something I deal with is, is, you know, shame from my past. And also with anxiety, like shame of the smallest stuff I can feel guilty and, and, and be hard on myself. So I think, um, you know, those are, that's just, that's a lot to be giving people, but I think gratitude and those things that I said with treat, treat your presence as a gift, you know, so. How about you, Annie? Um, I think understanding your power and worth and offering yourself up as a whole being. Do not offer yourself up in fragments. Um, offer yourself up in the things that you find commendable, the things that you still need to work on. Um, lean into your humanity. Uh, lean into those things, but do not offer yourself up in fragments so that you can make yourself small and palatable for those, you know, for others. That's one of the biggest things I've learned. And I would love to share that with young women, people in the business and beyond. You have the right to fully take up your space and to recognize the sacredness of what you offer. And um, do not, don't, don't break yourself down into fragments. Uh, uh, it's not worth betraying yourself on that level because it will crush your spirit. Yeah. Thank you. Such great advice. Yeah. Read your really ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, as as for me, I want to impart something as well. And that's just that I personally believe we heal in community. We heal with one another. And when you have a hard time keeping going for yourself, you tell one person who you trust, hey, I need you. I need some help. And that can be enough to help you find some motivation or some, um, just the, the will to just sit with it and wait for it to pass, like I said. And so we've all got this joint responsibility to take care of ourselves so that we can be good to one another. And I'm so grateful that each of you have joined me tonight and come together with that same spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you. Sean's back. I, I am back <laughs> and I want to give the heartiest of, of Zoom rounds of applause for that really inspiring and uplifting, but at times really honest about what isn't uplifting about right now. And, and, and I know about all the openness that y'all bring to the stage all the time, but it's a different thing to bring it into a Zoom microphone hanging out in your living room. And it's just thank you for being very real. I, I wasn't on camera, but I was still doing all the stuff I do on meetings where I'm like, yes, absolutely. And I'm shaking my head because I was, uh, I was so drawn. Um, our Q and a is open. And also we've cooked up a couple of questions and I've cooked up a bunch of questions, just watching y'all um, during this, this, this past conversation. So I wanted to ask a couple of those and still encourage people uh, to chime in and, and give yeah. us some cues and we'll get some A's. But uh, I'm thinking about all the all the moments I've spent in the last year with Lovesick Animal Online and Testify and Davina's music. Y'all have gone through, y'all have gotten me and many people through a lot of hard times. What do you put on? What do you listen to to get through those times? So I'm going to start by asking that to Nazim. What is your music that gets you through the difficult periods of your mental health or just of your life? Uh, there's this, this Marvin Gaye song, Sad Tomorrows. I play that for like 30 minutes. <laughs> you know, like Donnie Hathaway. Reggae. Uh, yeah, Donnie. And, and reggae, when when it, when I really got scared, like if the world was gonna end, I was listening to uh Buju Bantan um till I'm laid to rest. That's yeah. a good one. But just like e either either intense like jazzy R and B stuff or a, uh spiritual reggae, spiritual music. Um, I'm all the way in on that. And uh, never Annie. would have made it. <laughs> That's the last one. <laughs> uh, Annie, what's 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 the music you put on? Um, I put on Aretha Franklin um, when she was with the church, with James Cleveland still, um, Bridge Over Troubled Water, um, Mavis Staples, Nina Simone. Um, I listen to the music of like Bob Marley, of the rebel music, like the revolution music. Um, Odetta, you know, is for me to go back to my my youth, you know, when my mother would play when times were unsettled. And when she would smoke a cigarette and be like, ain't nothing new under the sun, I went back to when my mother would put on the record player and sit in the dark and meditate. That was her meditation. That was her freedom. That was her. So I went back to the ways of my mother, you know, mm -hmm. 
sat and I meditated and I may have had a smoke or two, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I had to go to those places, you know? Yeah. I, I want to ask Davina, but I also want to put Sarah on the spot. Sarah, I, I know you are not a perform musician, but I imagine those headphones aren't only used for zoom meetings. What do you, what are you oh, no. listening to? So. Oh, Sean, how long can do I have? Um, I am a big fan of using the happiness playlist, uh, Mark Malman's book and concept in therapy with my clients. And I myself have happiness playlists that it's two rules, anything that makes you feel a little bit better, feel good, brings a smile and absolutely no judgment. So that I, I will gladly share my playlist with you, Sean. But I, I would say if I had to pick one album that I listen through the most in the last year or two or five is Janelle Monet's Dirty Computer. I cannot get enough of it. It's just every track, oh, it's perfection. And Davina, how about you? What's, what's the soundtrack? I mean, there's been like a year and a half of, I'm a real seasonal listener. So like summer right now is uh, every summer, the beginning of summer, it's always Frank Ocean Blonde album. I don't know why. It makes me want to get in trouble in a good way. And then I also love Nick Drake because I absolutely adore being sad sometimes. So <laughs> I'm a listener to sad songs over and over again. And then I just have the basis of like Little Walter and like Ray Charles and, you know, um, a lot of that, you know, the, the bam, you know, Black American music is what is, is I would be absolutely in pieces if it wasn't for um, just the history of, of all the music that I love, you know, from from uh, Fats Waller to Louis Armstrong and things like that. So I'm kind of all over the map. Also love Wilco, just putting that out there. The, the current thanks you for yeah. that. We appreciate it. I do. I'm a big Wilco <laughs> fan, big time, yeah. Um, this is, I, I, Annie, were you about to jump in and say something? I heard a little something. So oh, I just no, to... I was just like, I love them too. Yeah, yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah. Um, I have a question that I was thinking about. I'm also a musician besides for being a host. And it seems like a lot of us are talking about stopping playing some games that we used to play about pecking orders and about pressure and about what we have to do for audiences, but perhaps how we also measure our own successes against other people's. We've had a little bit of a respite of getting that immediate feedback of, oh, they sold more tickets than I did, or, oh, they got the opening slot that I didn't. Uh, we've got a little pause and it seems like a lot of us, the people in this Zoom room in particular, are talking about a new level of saying, forget about that. I want to I want to craft my art. I think we are all going to face a time where we want to get back into the rat race and be perhaps as childish or as petty as I at times have been in my career, where you just go, oh, can I be better than that person or is that bigger? How are you going to maintain some of the peace that you found? How are you going to maintain that? when you jump back into the game and you start to be more involved in the performing world more routinely. So I'm going to ask Davina first, uh, but I want to let everybody have space if they want to chime in after Davina's answer. You know, there's like so many levels for this for me, I think, you know, um, I've been petty for sure. It's been really tough. I think uh, when, it, you know, I've had, being an individual and really fighting for your artistry and, and, you know, sometimes having intellectual property, um, when, what do they call that? Um, copying, I guess, or things like things like that, you know, I'm just not going to really care anymore. Um, to, to keep myself in check, I'm just hoping that I can have people around me that the people I'm choosing to have in my community now can, can call me out. I think that, you know, that's just needed in a lot of ways, you know? Um, and like Annie had said too, this, you're worthy is understanding that eat off your own plate. I frankly am not, if there's people I don't want to mess with, I'm not going to even mess with people that mess with them. I just don't even want, you know, that type of negativity um, kind of in my life. Um, understand that all artistry comes in different forms and shapes. Nobody is uh, better or worse. They're doing their art, whether you like it or not. So, you know, all in all, um, you just have to be accepting of that. And like I said, eat, eat off my own plate. But I also want to give some people stuff off my plate, too. Like, I love helping other people. You know, I love uh, give. like I don't hold any venue number. There's no gatekeeping in my world. If people need help, 
take it, you know, and I will give, I will give them so many earfuls of my advice. They're going to hate me by the end of it. And it's happened, you know, <laughs> but I'm not going to hold anything. If, you know, if people need help, I'm going to help them. I, I've always tried to do that, but, um, you know, I you don't really know. Have. You really have. As it's so have. important to me. This is hard. Yeah, this is a hard business, everybody. She's an OG. You know, she's an OG of a do-it-yourself musician, really work yourself up and really, and, and that's something that I've been very fortunate to pass along as well as the mentorship, whether, and, and tough mentorship, being like, okay, you want to get into this room, but there's work. <laughs> there's artists, a local artist that will draw, I mean, the honesty of going to the next levels in the business and being supportive, of it, but having honesty to say, you may want to work on this a little bit. So that mm -hmm. you're prepared for these opportunities. You fight so hard, your ego will fight so hard, and then you get in there and you're not ready. Mm -hmm. So mentoring and love and truth. That's not, and, and I've been very grateful to experience that and be able to extend it. And um, I think. It's important to not know that we're alone. I think yeah, that that's a yeah. key, you know, and I think. You know, it's not just us pinning us against other musicians. I think, yeah. you know, the venues need to get involved. They need to help us. We can't, we're running eight different jobs. We're PRing, we're recording, we're writing. I mean, there's just a lot of changes that need to happen. Um, the only thing I can change is myself and to stop being judgmental and to not compare. There's nobody like Davina Lozier. There's nobody like Annie Mack. There's nobody like Nazim. Like we are, there's nobody like Sean. There's nobody like Sarah. You know, and just kind of um, the worthiness of that. Yeah. And be inspired by that in a healthy yeah. way versus being like, I'm competing with them. It's like, what is it about them that I need to learn yeah. on that level? It took me a long time to learn that. I was very resentful as an artist, very entitled, very, and it was like, have I put in the work? Am I practicing? Am I willing to look at footage of myself? Am I willing to talk to the venue owner and be honest about what I can do? Am mm -hmm. I say... I can do 50 people guaranteed, half that's my family. What else do you, can we be cool? You know, and have those honest conversations because when they tell us, well, you got to pack and join and you have to do this and you have to do that. Well, you're going to lie because you need to work because I need to eat. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it's just the honesty and the respect, I think. It's really hard on your mental health yeah. when, when you don't feel you're worthy. And it's really hard on your artistry and it's really hard on you as your soul. Um, you can lose yourself in that decline of I'm not good enough. I'm not pulling enough people in. Why do people hate my music? Am I too fat? Am I too old? Am I, you know, it just can go on and on and, that's and on. And crazy to be knowing, <laughs> knowing the, you know, what you carry and, and so many various artists with it. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. you gotta be mentally sound, you know? I, I yep. will say you, you gotta, um, you gotta be happy for people too. Yes. Like, yeah. You see you your do. Favorite, yeah. like, opportunities. <laughs> got to be genuinely happy because it's like if, yeah. if everyone succeeds then everything will be better because if everybody's rich then you you know you guys might be able to open an amusement park or something crazy like that so you just got to be happy to see people <laughs> getting it i'm if gonna get tilt the world everybody gets their turn you know what i mean if you, yeah if you get, you stay down so you come up so if you stay focused sure vision you keep doing what you do you keep being the person who you say you are yeah good blessings just keep happening but but it'll be harder to catch those if you're looking at what the next person got yeah that's, also that's also to know that like everybody's path is different mm -hmm. so you yeah. can't be comparing your life with another person how they succeeded mm -hmm. why am i not everybody we like mm -hmm. you said we all have our purpose and we all have our path with our purpose for our purpose period so it's like don't compare it anyway you know good luck to them you know yeah taking a long time to learn that too because it's tough when you're told i think mus musicians were so resilient and tough and fragile when you're told like you're not good or you're not like to your face you know yeah like, well damn <laughs> you know it's hard to walk away from that you i know? remember uh I was, I was telling someone the other day like i started work i did a gig the other day where i called 10 years ago and they wouldn't book me because they just felt i wasn't uh, good enough. I don't know. I didn't bring money in. I'm too jazzy. I don't know what they thought. I don't even care any anymore. But the person that booked me for it 10 years ago said, well, you're, you are, you guys are a really good $300 band. 
And that just stuck with me. And I'm brushing my teeth after my gig, like three hundred dollar band. You know, fifty cents you know, said, "Fifty cents said, you're worth what you negotiate." Yeah, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but those are the things that you have to use. You can take it and use it to motivate you. Sure. So, I was a waitress for a long time, taking mm -hmm. orders, people drinking like 10 Diet Cokes. I'm like, you do know that's not good for you. You know, like just petty and resentful, going to the bathroom, <laughs> writing songs in the bathroom. Like, I got to get out of this. I can't be yeah. doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. It takes everything. To you get know, those you are bad it. for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that, friend. You didn't be here for two hours. I'm trying to turn this table, table over. You need to go home. <laughs> Here's yeah. a to-go Diet Pepsi for you. <laughs> um, I got a I got a question for Annie, and I also got a, a different question for Nazim. But uh, Annie, you talked a lot about places you didn't want to expend your energy this year, uh, relationships that you cut off, relationships that you changed because that wasn't where you want to spend your energy. Can I ask you, where do you want to spend your energy? What's ways you can spend your energy in a way that is rewarding to you and to your spirit? Um, I love, I love telling people their potential. I love giving people the vision of what, what they could be. I think that's what my calling in music is. I don't think I'm a master vocalist. I don't play anything, but my, my testimony is if I can do it, you can do it. You know, if, if, if I can come from the background that I've come from and, and have things happen to me you can do it too. You know, you're just as important. You're just as worthy. It may show up differently. That feeds me so much to speak to a person's spirit, whether it's musically or, or verbally, to let them know that you are amazingly created and you deserve all the happiness and all the goodness. You know, I feel called to do that. Well, that that is an inspiring calling and one I think you are wildly up to the task of because you have an incredible spirit. I'm going to actually close with a question for Nazim and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up. But um, at this Everybody Gets a Turn amusement park that we're all going to open up with all of our successes. Um, <laughs> Nazim, you exude the spirit of celebration. And I don't just mean that tonight. I mean that in, in so many ways that I get to observe you online, on stage, on videos, et cetera. And you talked earlier about celebrating who you are and your family and your friends. It's just straight up, what have you been celebrating lately about yourself or about the people around you? What have you been celebrating? I've been celebrating the, the, the art, hip hop. I celebrate hip hop daily. Um, we celebrate, I, we have barbecues and stuff like that. You know, you, you give people credit where credit's due. If you got a friend who, who makes good music and you think they should do it more, then you celebrate them by recording for them or like writing a song with them. Um, you celebrate, you eat good, eat, uh, do what you want to do. It's your, every day is your birthday. You got to live like every day is your birthday. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that wow. doesn't mean just party. It means like, what would you do on your birthday? You know what I mean? You want to take a bike ride? You want some, some quiche or something? Ooh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> such a deep joy. It's so, it's so inspiring for it really is. a skeptic mm -hmm. and a pretty, you know, bitter person, <laughs> jaded person to meet a, a naturally like your spirit's so right and it's beautiful. It's really nice to meet you tonight because you all are very I'm like, too. I'm like, get them before they get you. That's right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I am so grateful uh, to everybody who, who made this event possible, both uh, right present here, but also I want to give huge shout outs to the team from The Current who've done a bang up job yeah. putting this thing together. Yeah. So I want to acknowledge Cecilia, who's working behind the scenes, Kelsey, who's working behind the mm -hmm. scenes, uh, Tom, who's working behind the scenes, and a, a lot of other people who aren't on this call right now who have been really, uh, really essential. And I want to give special recognition to Sarah Souter Johnson, who uh, really did a yes. great job on this thing together. Um, what na what Sarah did in navigating a conversation like that is not easy. So props to Sarah. And then huge props to our panelists, Annie Mack, yeah. uh, Davina Lozier, and Nazim, Nazim, excuse me. Thank you so much uh, for sharing this space to talk about mental health and self-care for creatives. And also 
y'all made this possible, the people who are hanging out here and bringing their spirit into this room. So thank you. Um, a lot of important topics we definitely covered tonight, um, some of which might have felt really heavy. And if you or anyone you know is in a crisis, free trained help is available to you 24-7. Yeah. So there's a crisis text line. So that's a text number. It's 741741. You can also talk to someone at the National Suicide Prevention Hotline by calling 1-800-273-TALK. That's 273-TALK. These resources are free and they're available 24 hours a day, every day. Line Check is made possible in part by the Minnesota Legacy Amendments Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the members of Minnesota Public Radio. Events like Line Check strengthen the Minnesota music ecosystem and member support makes this possible. The Current provides a community supported space where local artists can thrive and a variety of voices are celebrated. Contribute to a creative ecosystem that sets our state apart when you donate at thecurrent.org. We got another line check coming up next Tuesday, and it's looking like a great one. Musician, author, and activist Shauna Potter is going to speak with Ro Lorenzen and representatives from Sequirity and events by Lady K about supporting safe music spaces in Minnesota. You can register for, registrar. You can register for that webinar at thecurrent.org. Again, a huge thanks to everybody who made this possible. Uh, we got that great song at the beginning of this event from Mary Bue, and we're going to wrap it up with another track from Mary Bue. Thank you all for being a part of Line Check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, two, three. Take from in 